Stir from Plaid, and we are here today. Um, it's part of Michael's Community Classroom, and we're going to be talking about all things pouring. So we're doing a Pouring 101 class. Um, this is a huge trend that happened about a couple years ago. Um, we started really seeing it, people DIYing um, these beautiful marble pouring um, projects, these canvases and artwork. And so uh, Plaid has created a line in their folk art brand um, to help you achieve this awesome marble poured look. So we're going to uh, take a deep dive into basics, supplies that you would need, tips and techniques today, ask tons of questions. We are here. We love to be able to chat with you. Jessie is going to be um, relaying your questions and comments, and she's also going to be on the chat. So ask away. Um, we're, I'm going to be showing you a couple different pours. We've got a direct pour, a dirty pour, a puddle pour. Um, and also going to show you this really great set of coasters that we made. We're going to actually make these. Um, and this is part of a whole pouring series that we're doing with Michaels. Um, we have been so happy and excited to partner with them during this time. They have these great free online classes. So um, we are going to be with you the next couple weeks teaching you um, not only how to pour, but we have our Let's Paint and our Mod Podge. So we're really excited. So we want to hear from all of you. Um, and Jesse is going to give you some information. We're going to be doing a giveaway also during this uh, live. Yeah, so um, we're going to be giving away $50 worth of Plaid products um, to a random person in the comments. So go ahead and comment and participate. And when um, the live stream is ending, we are going to select someone and you're going to get $50 worth of Plaid products so you can do all of these pouring projects at home. Right, right. And again, the supply list is included um, when you registered for the class, but, you know, use what you can. If you weren't able to get the exact colors, um, you know, just use what you can. We ask questions if you want to alternate or substitute colors. Um, the most important thing is our pouring medium or pouring paint that you do need. So if you weren't able to get now, you can go back and watch this class after. It'll be on michaels.com. Um, so you could, you know, just be inspired today. That's something that is really important also during this time that we want to bring you as inspiration. Um, and you could go back and get your product and pour later. So we're going to get started again, ask questions, comment, let me know. Um, and we are going to be making, you can see behind us, we have a lot of product that goes into this, um, a lot of paint that we need. So um, I've got colors everywhere. We'll do some fun combos. We'll talk about color and we'll get started. Um, like I mentioned, Folk Art has two different pouring products at Michael's um, online and in store. You know, Michael's is great right now with the curbside pickup. Um, I even have uh, same day delivery. I have used them every week since this um, all started happening, our quarantine. And um, so it's really great and accessible to get all this product. So we've got our Folk Art pre-mixed pouring paint. So this comes already mixed with the pouring medium in the bottle. So you don't need to do anything. All you're going to do is you're going to pour on your canvas or whatever surface. Um, it's a smaller color palette. There's a lot of pretty bright basics and two metallics. And then we have our pouring medium that comes in a 16 ounce. And the great thing about this is that you can add your own paint to it and you can personalize your pours. So you can take any paint and mix it with our pouring medium. And I'm going to show you um, the ratio and how to do that. And you can make any of these beautiful colors. That's why I have so much product here because it's really endless what you can do. You can even use metallics, glitter, specialty, our color shift, dragonfly, that all works really great with this. And it's not gonna change the color. So you can add this to any of your acrylic paints. So we're gonna be using um, all our folk art and there's over close to a hundred different colors at Michael's just in the regular folk art line. So you've got plenty, plenty to choose from. And we're using regular folk art today. Um, so you would see with the tan lid, but we have a multi-surface enamel, like I said, metallics and specialties that you can use with this pouring medium. So I'm gonna do just a simple um, quick pour showing you how to use the pouring paint, which is pre-mixed. So I've um, pre-selected pre -selected my colors. I'll set those aside, but I am gonna talk to you guys first about what you need to get started if you haven't poured before. So um, I am pouring just on, um, I just have some card stock, some illustration paper here. Um, I covered my surface because you're gonna get messy. Don't worry about your nails because you can't get manicures anywhere right <laughs> anyway right now. Um, so your hands are gonna get messy. 
I like to have um, just some baby wipes or hand wipes with me next to me and my garbage can also, just so I can wipe and throw away. You can wear gloves if you have them, um, but I'm just gonna go with my bare hands today. Um, also, parchment paper works, wax paper, if you wanna just protect your surface. And it's great because the paint doesn't stick to that. I'm gonna show you something fun you can do after you do your pours with your leftover paint. So I'm gonna, I have just a variety of canvases also here that we're gonna use. And you can really pour on anything. Um, you can pour on wood. Like I said, we're gonna do some wood coasters. Um, I've got this great wood slice and all these are available at Michael's. So you could do a beautiful pour on this. Um, really any shape and size, you know, you can pour on. Um, you wanna just make sure that you can swirl it around and move it. Again, I also use um, these disposable baking pans that you just get at your grocery store um, or, you know, Walmart, Target, whatever. Um, these are great because you can reuse them. And again, I'm gonna show you how you can cool the paint out after and make a paint skin. So these are a really great thing to have and you can use them over and over again. I use the metal part, I use the plastic part. These are really great disposable like cookie pans almost. So they're shallow, which is really nice. And again, depending on what you're pouring on, if it fits or not, but it makes it great because you can just move it aside and set it and keep going. And it's great, it dries right on there. So I'm gonna use a shallow one since this canvas is smaller. Some of my canvases are large and won't fit. So I have my canvas. This is just a 12 by 12 or a 10 by 10 actually, I think. And here's a little tip of something you'll need. So I use thumbtacks to prop up my canvas. So I stick them right into the back of the canvas or the wood or whatever I'm pouring on. And you stick them right in there and that's gonna create little legs for you. And it's gonna keep it off of what you're pouring on so the paint drips off and it dries and doesn't stick. So I just have a question tip. real quick. Sure. Did you prep that canvas with gesso before you started? I did not. There is no, you do not need to prep or um, add anything to your surface. You can pour directly on the canvas. Thanks. You could even use an old canvas that you have. Say you have a painting or something that you did previous and you're like, eh, I want to redo this or update it. You could just go ahead and pour right over um, something that you already have even. That's a great idea. Yeah. So we got to get resourceful now, you know? <laughs> yeah. You, you got to be creative and get in there and get in your craft room, clean out a bunch of stuff and just pour on it. <laughs> <laughs> this is great too for kids. So not only adults, you know, you can make beautiful artwork and it's really relaxing, um, but kids can get involved in this also. This is something fun and easy that they can do, get their hands messy. Um, it's great, you know, if your weather's great, get outside and do it. So it's a really fun thing to do with the whole family. So I stuck my thumbtacks, if you guys can see, there we go, right in the canvas. And I'm just gonna use this metal pan because it'll make it easy to move this when we're done. So I'm gonna use, let's see, I'm gonna use our pre-mixed pouring paint. So I've got aqua, green, white, and I have a gold metallic, metallic gold. So um, something else to talk about um, before I get started is color palette. So you can, make, again, there are thousands, you know, millions of different color combinations you can do, um, especially with the pre or the pouring medium, which I love that, that you can personalize it so much. Um, but you want to stick to between four and five colors for your pores. Um, we've just had great success, and I can show you some examples when we've sticked, to, we made a color palette. So we like to use, um, you know, colors in the same family. We like to add in a white or a black. This is a really pretty, like a pink, a coral. I'm gonna do this in a little bit. Um, white and then just this navy to ground it. Um, it's really nice to do light colors together also. So you wanna stick in your cool family or your warm family. You always get a beautiful pour that way. Um, and anytime, you, you know, add a metallic, that's a great little um, add, just a little bit of um, sparkle and shine to any of your projects. Um, and I'm going to show you, you can add glitter after the fact also once your pour is dry. Um, but I really do like to stick like warms and cools or be, you know, very specific about my color palette. You just get better pours. And even though they're not going to blend, um, and that's why we use the pouring medium, it's just great to have that differentiation. Um, that's what's so great about the pre-mixed and the pouring paint is that when you have your paints 
when they're swirling and mixing, whether it's in your cup or on your canvas, they're not going to get muddy or dull. So if you just used a regular paint, so I just took a bottle of folk art and I was like, I'm going to pour at this and I squirt it on my canvas and I start going like this, it's going to get muddy and brown and dingy. So you really, that pouring medium is super important to keep the colors separated and it's going to give you those crisp, clean lines in your pour. So I'm going to get out my aqua. And so I'm just going to pour straight from the bottle on this guy. Very simple. Like I said, if you don't want to get into the mixing, this is a super simple way, again, with the kids or you are a beginner, um, this is a great way to do it. So I am going to pour, woo, and there's no right or wrong in this too, which is really great. It's just, you know, watching and figuring out what really works. So I'm going to pour directly on the canvas. That's not coming out of the bottle there. That's all right. All right. And then I'm going to layer and you can layer right on top and you can do as many, you know, like I said, pick four or five colors, um, six tops, but you can just keep layering them back and forth over top of each other. Um, adding white is always a great way to tie everything together. You know, I like to have it maybe start on the top of my canvas and end that way. You can create a pattern. You could go zigzag side to side. Um, I'm going to add gold at the end and I'm just going to keep layering this on. I don't know why this guy isn't coming out of the bottle. Let me see here. So Kira, which technique is this again? So I'm just doing a direct pour, which means I'm using the, the paint solid right out of the bottle. Or if you're mixing um, with your pouring medium, it is just a solid color and you're pouring on your canvas. So cool. we call this a direct pour. There we go, you guys, it's much better. And again, no right or wrong, add your white. Remember if you're using black, it goes a long way. So a little bit of black, you can always go back in and add, like I mentioned, but that black can really overpower. So I'm just creating kind of like a swirly zigzag pattern. Um, let's see, some more blue on there, some aqua. I mean, that's pretty as is. And then I'm just gonna add some metallic and I'm gonna go um, diagonal on the metallic, just as like an accent on there. You could do this on white canvas, you could do this on black canvas, or if you wanted to paint something underneath of it and then swirl it, you could do that. So I now have all my paint on there. I hope you can see how it just, it's beautiful how it starts wow. moving. And then you're gonna lose paint. It's gonna run off and it's gonna cover your sides. So that's a great way to get your sides. You kind of just have to play with it and get your pattern and it changes. If you ever so slightly move it, it's gonna, you can see the movement. So that's what is so important about the pouring medium that's in this premix paint and our pouring medium that we have separate that it really lets that paint float on top of the surface and not mix. Like I said, if you did this with just a regular bottle of paint, it would be muddy and brown by now. Mm -hmm. So I, there's this big, so I'm gonna add a little bit of gold here. Like I said, some of my gold fell off. And any color that you have kind of towards the edge, it's going to run off first. So remember that also. So if you only do a concentration, so say I only put blue here or I only put the gold here, it's going to run off. So you're going to have to go back and add. Kira, do you have any tips for covering the sides of the canvas? So literally, I just let it, I can't, let me, I can show you guys, it's okay. So there we go. Just let it run off. So you want to use enough paint that it's going to cover like more than cover the canvas. So you don't need to paint or worry about the sides. Like see all four of my sides just from twirling it and swirling it, it's covered. And then like I said, you're gonna have extra paint in your pan and I'm gonna show you how to make a paint skin out of it. So that is a direct pour and we're just using our folk art pre-mixed pouring paint. I said it's gonna get messy so I'm gonna have to wipe my hands a million times. So I'm gonna move this guy over now we're going to get into using our pouring medium. So this is our folk art pouring medium. And what's so great about this is that you can mix it with any of our folk art paints. So if you guys can see that. And um, you're going to be able to do this with any color, any color combination, any specialty. It's so great. So I'm using just plastic cups. These are just plastic cocktail cups. Um, use what you have. I like the clear for the videos because you guys can see. I have short ones. I have some tall ones um, to do the dirty pour. Um, you can use popsicle sticks or plastic spoons to stir with, even the end of a paintbrush, and just wipe it off. 
So that's kind of really what you need for this. Again, I'm gonna use my thumbtacks um, and I'm gonna grab another canvas. So this one's gonna probably, I don't think this will fit in my tray, so I'm gonna grab another piece of poster board here. Does anybody have any questions? Yeah, so Kira, people are wondering, what if you get bubbles in your pour? How can you avoid that or how can you get rid of that? So I would just keep swirling and it'll kind of loosen that bubble. You know, like if you have a bubble on something and you tap it, usually that bubble will pop. Mm -hmm. So you could lightly tap it like this or just swirl a little bit and that bubble will come right out. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so you guys see that? Good and lined up. Okay, so I'm gonna use our pre-mixed pouring medium and I'm gonna do um, something similar to this. So I've got the coral, the hot pink, the white, and the navy. Again, a great color combination. We've got our warm pinks and corals and then that great navy just to kind of accent it. So, got our pinks and what you wanna do is, actually move that. So I'm gonna get my cups out and we're going to put, so it's a one-to-one -one ratio for your paint and your pouring medium. So I'm gonna pour um, this hot pink directly into the cup. And again, it depends how much you make. So you can do multiple pours if you wanna make a big batch. You know, you can um, pour on multiple canvases. You could just pour it out to do your paint skins we're gonna talk about. You can even save this if you put, you know, you want to do some today and go back tomorrow. You could put some press and seal or some hand wrap over it and close it up and use it again. Hey, Kira, um, uh -huh. can you use glass paint with the pouring medium? You can use glass paint. Yeah, so I would do, um, I would use an enamel or a multi-surface if you're going to be pouring on glass. Okay. Someone also wants to know, um, can you use acrylic inks with the pouring medium? I feel like it's probably just for paints though. Yeah, we have not done that. So that is a good question. Um, I would stick to acrylic paints because I'm not sure what the medium, like how it would change the look of the ink, but it's worth trying. Yeah. It wouldn't any, hurt anything. Yeah. Any acrylic paints will work. Glass paint, enamels, multi-surface. It will all yeah. work with it. Okay, oh, that's black. I don't have maybe here. Okay, midnight. So again, all these, I'm just using regular folk art for this, but again, like Jesse said, you could use any of them. Okay, so I have all my paints in, and then you're gonna do a one-to-one -one ratio, and I like to just kind of, instead of shaking so you don't get bubbles, I just kind of, my bottle's dirty, just kind of give it a little swirl before you pour out. And this is, um, it's a very thin consistency, so it's gonna, really thin down. You can see how thick this paint is. It's going to thin it down. But again, you want a one-to-one -one ratio, and I'm just going to eyeball it here. Try not to make a mess. And again, this pouring medium is key to doing this. I am making a mess um, because it allows your paint not to become muddy and mix together. Without this, it's, you're just going to get a big blob of brown paint on your canvas. Even if it doesn't look like that, when it dries, it's gonna get really dull and dingy and mixed together. Like you leave it overnight and you're gonna wake up in the morning, it's not gonna be pretty. Um, and let your pores dry about 24 hours. You wanna let them sit at least overnight, if not 24 hours once you pour them. Yeah, people um, have been asking that. So that, thanks, Kira. They were wondering how long it takes for it to dry. Yep, I always say overnight. I guess it depends when you're making it, but you know, if you do it during the day, just come back the next morning and it'll be dry. Okay, so I'm just gonna stir. And again, the great thing about this pouring medium, it looks cloudy and milky, but it is going to, once you mix it with your paint, it's not going to change the color of your paint. You can see how dark and how fast that's getting back to the true color of the paint. So it's not gonna alter. So if you're trying to match something specifically to your decor or another painting or something you have or paper you want to you know pour and add Mod Podge and decoupage with this it's going to go right back to that color that came out of the bottle. So I'm just going to mix these real quick. So Kira um, people people are asking would water work instead of the medium? Nope so um, great question thank you for asking <laughs> but it's really the pouring medium that's the magic in this. So just adding water it's going to dilute your paint but it's still going to get muddy. So you really need either the pre-mixed pouring paint or the pouring medium. That's the magic in here. And after you're done pouring, do you need to seal it with like a polyurethane? 
So you do not need to seal it. Um, if you're just creating um, like a piece of art or something that's decorative, if you are going to be use it, like for example, our coasters, if you're gonna use this for like a functional, you wanna set your drinks down on it, um, we recommend using our Mod Podge sealer. So we have a um, clear acrylic sealer in Mod Podge and Michaels carries this all also. You just um, hit it, one coat and let it dry and then it's gonna be sealed in and you can actually use it and it'll protect it. Or for rocks, like a lot of people are pouring on rocks or if you wanna put something outdoor, oh, sorry, that something fell, um, for example, we um, poured this pumpkin. So for Halloween, if you guys can see that, we poured this pumpkin. So you could just leave this outside, especially if you use a multi-surface paint. Um, that's important too. Like if it's for outdoor, um, I would use multi-surface, but you could spray this right with your Mod Podge sealer and then it's gonna protect it from the elements outside. Okay, so you can see, let me finish stirring. Those are all great questions. Is anybody pouring along with us or is everybody just watching, getting lots of ideas and you're gonna- Yeah, it looks like some people might be working from home. It looks like a lot of people are just watching to get inspiration too. All right, gonna get crazy and pour all weekend. Yeah. Kind of addictive go. and I like see, relaxing. When you yeah, I see some people pour. pouring with apple barrel too at home. Um, yeah. Yeah, awesome. It's, it's kind of like cooking or baking, right? Yeah, it is. I don't like to bake, but I can do this. Yeah. <laughs> yep, tons of people are saying, they're commenting, saying, we're pouring, we're pouring. So a lot of people good, are pouring good, good, good. at home. Yeah, we just thought this was a great way to do an introduction to this series, just talk about all the things, pouring, and get people comfortable. And then um, as we go, Michaels will be posting um, on their website starting tomorrow the rest of the classes that we're going to have available. And we're going to get more into specific pours. So we're going to do a rainbow pour, a geode pour, which I can show you guys is beautiful with these rock crystals on it. Um, we're going to do a galaxy pour. So we've got a lot of fun things coming up that are going to be more project specific. But this was just a great way to get everybody um, introduced to this or a refresher if you haven't done it in a while. And Kira, can yeah. you repeat um, what the names of the products are so people can order them online, like the brands and the colors? Sure, sure. So this is, no, we're going to show you guys. So this is folk art pre-mixed pouring paint. So again, available in store and online at Michael's. And this is a select number of colors and you can pour right out of the bottle. There's none of this mixing. You can just take your paint and pour, you know, as many color combinations you can do um, with what we have. We've got whites, blues, greens. It's like very basic, but still you can create beautiful pieces with this. So this is already mixed for you. Takes all the work out of it. Um, still super fun to do. And then we have a folk art pouring medium. So this is 16 ounces and a little bit goes a long way. Um, and you do one-to-one -one with your paints. So I just filled with my plastic cup and one-to-one, -one, and this is a folk art pouring medium. And I am recreating this guy right here. So he is um, hot pink, a coral, a white, and a navy. So again, keeping with the warm pinks and whites and corals, and then adding that pop of navy in there to like really make it stand out. Yeah. Kira, what about um, mixing different colors first before you add the pouring medium? Could you do that if you wanted to? Sure. Say you wanted a lighter pink or a darker blue or you don't have green and you want to make your own. Absolutely. Um, just go ahead and mix that up and then do your one-to-one -one pouring medium right in there. Totally fine. Yeah. And again, the same with your specialties. Like I said, we're going to use some um, treasure gold and it works the same way. Just one-to-one um, -one with your pouring medium. Awesome. Yeah, so you can see also the consistency, I don't know if you guys can see that, of how it changes. So this, you know, Fogger Heights are really thick. By, by adding that pouring medium, it's going to thin it down. It's going to help it run and create the movement on the canvas. And that's what the pouring medium, maybe that's a really great way to say it. It creates that movement and allows the paint to glide across the canvas without mixing. So, okay, so I'm going to do, I'm going to do a big guy. I got enough paint here, I think. Um, all right, so I'm going to stick my um, thumbtacks right in the back, and these are just like regular flat thumbtacks. I've seen people also use um, like little medicine or shot glasses to rest it on. I like the thumbtacks because then I know it's not going to wobble and fall off and I can move it easily. Um, it just leaves less to chance for me, especially if kids are helping. It's like more secure for them. They don't knock it over. 
So we have another question, Kira. Can you use the pre-mixed pouring medium and colors that you've mixed yourself with the pouring medium together? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, absolutely, and I can do that. I can add some gold. So it doesn't matter whether you've made your own and you wanna just like add a little bit here and there, any combo works really great. That's a great suggestion. Okay, so I am going, so I've mixed all of these. So I'm gonna do something fun some, since we've already showed really how just to do a pour. I'm going to do a dirty pour. So what we do is I like to use a bigger cup, just another plastic cup. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to layer your paint into the cup, all the colors, and then you're going to, we're going to take the cup and the canvas, we're gonna flip it upside down and all the paint is gonna run off when we lift the cup. So it's really fun to watch. Um, so again, I'm going to layer my paint and remember whatever color you put in first, that's gonna be your top color when it dumps. Does that make sense? So you're gonna layer and flip. And so all the colors that you put in last are gonna come out first. And that last color on the bottom of your cup is gonna really like flood the top. So okay. just remember that when you're like working with lights and darks. Like, like layering. I, what's layering, right. Because dark is gonna overpower. So a little bit of that goes a long way. And you can always go back and add. Like say there's like a spot you don't like, you can just kind of slide that off and go back and add some color or paint and fix that part. Kira, one more question. Um, if, so if you wanted cells in your pour, is there something you can add like silicone or something maybe? You can. Um, we do not make a product um, that does that, but I know there's a ton of inspiration online that you can add silicone to do that. I bet the silicone would work really well with the pouring medium too, because the pouring medium keeps it from flowing. I mean, keeps it from blending and then the silicone can create cells. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I've seen beautiful things. And again, people, you know, doing their pores and then adding like epoxy resin on top of them. Like it is really endless. Like you can go to the end of Pinterest, even if you just start yeah. looking up. Um, and we've got a ton of inspiration on platonline.com. Um, more information about this product and tons of projects and tips and tricks. Also, we've got a blog, um, a bunch of how-to videos. Like if you, you know, just want to get really into this and learn more, we go really in depth. So that's a great resource. Um, also, before I get pouring while I'm talking, um, Jesse, do you want to mention the giveaway again? I'd love to. Um, so we are going to select someone randomly from the comments when um, Kira is finished with the class, and we're going to be giving away $50 worth of Plaid products so you can do all of this pouring at home. Yep. That's pretty so, exciting. So make sure you're participating. Make sure you're commenting because you will be entered in, uh, into a chance to win $50 worth of all the products that Kira is using today. Yeah, and we're gonna actually announce at the end of this video. Mm -hmm. So you wanna stay tuned to see if you're a winner. Yep. And again, this video will be available after on michaels.com. So you can go back and watch and rewind. Um, if you're just kind of watching along now where you're working and kind of have it in one ear and you wanna get crafty this weekend, you can go back and watch that, which is great. Yeah. Okay, so dirty pour. I'm going to start layering in my paints. So very simple. And when you start pouring them in, it's not going to look like, it's going to look like they're not layered. It's going to look like the paints are just mixing into each other, but they're not. And you don't want to stir it or mix it. You just want to directly over top pour and start layering. And again, you know, a little bit of dark is going to go a long way. I am just going to start layering and layering. So if you guys can see that, so it looks like nothing and you're like, this is not going to work, but I promise you it's going to work. Um, I've seen people go in and, you know, if you have, for example, just like one light color and you want to put a little bit of dark and you could hit it and swirl it a little bit, but I really like the technique of just layering in. It's a little thick. There we go. I'm just going to keep on layering. It's so exciting because you don't know what it's going to look like until it comes it's like out. It's a surprise, right? like, yeah. But it is. It's like the big reveal. And a little bit more navy. This is a fun one. Yeah, I love this color combo too. Gina's saying her daughter is all over this. She wants to make things with her. Bonus for the mama. Yay! <laughs> hey, you know what? We got to do what we got to do right now. <laughs> if we can get them crafting with us and not on TV or playing video games, I am all for it. Yes. Um, my son found some paint the other day and um, this is when all this we were home and um, 
he was trying to paint pour and make swirls and he was so sad that like it wasn't working and I was like oh buddy I gotta get you some pouring medium yeah. <laughs> He's so very throughout. disappointed with his brown blob that we still have to have in the house. You have to hang it up in his room for sure. Yeah, in his room. I think it's <laughs> um, so yeah, you just want to finish layering and you don't need to use all your paint. Like I said, that's what's so great. I'm just filling my cup so we can, you know, really get a great view of this. So um, Kira, is it better to have thicker layers or thinner layers when you're pouring it into the cup like that? It is really up to you. I prefer to do multiple thinner layers because I think you get a better variety and swirl of the paint. Like if you just do like one, one, one color, like layer it, mm -hmm. it's when you tip it over, it's going to be a different pattern. I like the, the more detail of the swirl that you get. Like you're going to get like bigger or thinner bands. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. you know, this one had a lot of coral in it. You can tell like it kind of overpowers. So the paint you put the most in, that's gonna be like the dominant color on it. Um, so for example, we did this black and white one. So you can tell we had a ton of black and just a little bit of white. So you yeah. can kind of see. And it was um, just just a tiny, tiny bit in there. Yeah, and okay. you can just move this from, remove this from your hands with soap and water, right? Yes, absolutely. My hands are stained from a million things, but um, manicures don't matter right now, guys. <laughs> It's manicures like, are canceled. <laughs> yeah, this is your manicure, paint pouring manicure. Um, you can wear gloves, you know, but sometimes, you know, gloves right now are harder to get. Um, so you can just bare hands. It will, it's non-toxic. Yeah. Any of all of this product is non-toxic, so it's not going to hurt you. Yeah. Um, I just like to have baby wipes by me so I can wipe off real quick and throw it away. And have your garbage can by you also because it does yeah. get messy. Yeah, but you don't need to use chemicals to remove it from your hands. Nope, soap and water. And you can just even rinse out if you don't want to waste your cups and spoons. You can just rinse those with soap and water also, and it comes right out. Okay, so here is my cup, if you can see, nice and full. And I am going to do the dirty pour. So I'm going to turn my um, canvas upside down, put my hand on here, and it's going to get messy. So we're gonna flip it upside down. Sorry, I hope Ooh. you guys can see that. It starts to leak out. So you can see all these colors um, starting to blend and swirl like in the cup already. Okay, oh my so gosh, yeah, we ready? can see it. I feel like I need a drum roll. Okay, ready? So there you go. Woo! That's exciting, I hope so. And you can um, use this paint left over too in here. That's then, great, we, we can see it really well on both cameras. Okay, good, so then we're just gonna start swirling. And see, I like all the layers because you do start to get some fun blending. Like, I really got some blending here with the white and the navy. So there you go. You just want to keep moving that around. Okay. So, yeah, you just want to keep swirling. Can you guys see that? It's really – and great. so what's funny is how different this one is from um, the other one. That one was a direct pour, actually, I believe. Mm -hmm. So with a direct pour, I don't know what the one I just did is, you get more of like a defined line and the dirty pour, you're going to get more of like a, a melted look almost. Mm. Everyone's so, saying, love it, love it. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. It's so a great, again, the big reveal. All your sides. There you go. I love that, you guys. Um, and like we said, you can take, here's just our premix pouring medium. So if you just wanted to accent with a little bit of gold maybe just on the corner there like a little touch quill is saying they're in india and it's 2 a.m and they stayed up to watch this oh i love that <laughs> thanks for watching <laughs> yes i love that so there you go guys i just add a little gold you could let that kind of um run off also so yeah i hope you got that's a that's a good pour that's really pretty i don't think there's that a bad awesome. right it looks like marble yeah, I love that. I love that color combo and how different. So this was just doing a um, direct pour and then this is what you get doing the dirty pour and how different these two looks are. So I love that, that you can get those two looks. Um, Kira, if you're using heavy bodied acrylics, how um, is the ratio still the same or do you want to adjust it? So I would adjust and, you know, really it is by kind of like touch and feel. Um, you want it to be thin. You want it to, if I have any left in here, you really want it to run off. Can you see okay. that? You want it to run off. It's almost like syrupy. 
Yes, yes. You want it to come right off of your spoon or your, you know, popsicle stick or whatever you're stirring. So that's kind of the consistency you want right there. So I would just, you know, maybe add a little bit. You can always go back and add more and kind of go back and forth with, you can add a little more paint, you can add a little bit more pouring medium, and you can kind of just play with it a little bit. You're not going to waste it. You can always adjust yeah. to make it just right. You could do a test pour also. Okay, so I'm going to move this guy off to the side. Okay, so wait, my I'm going to cover up one more time. So again, how long to dry, Kira? Um, I say overnight, 24 hours. I guess it depends. You know, if you get up in the morning and you're crafting all day. Um, you know, by that next morning, it's going to be completely dry. If you're doing it at night, I would wait, you know, till middle of the day, about 24 hours, we say, just to be completely dry. A lot of times, um, if it's really on there thick, you're gonna, it's going to be dry to touch, but it won't completely be cured. So let it go 24 hours. And then you can seal it. Like I said, if you're going to put it outdoors or you're going to like really use it as a functional piece, you can go ahead and spray it once it's completely dry. I'd recommend our Mod Podge glass sealer because that's going to completely protect it. Yeah. Debbie's saying she's decorating her new home and this will give her great accent pieces. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what's so great about the pouring medium. I'm going to clean up my mess here um, while we're talking that you can make it match anything. Like it, it's endless what you can do. Like you said, you can mix your own colors. You could use any of the folk art paints, uh, specialty, which is so great. Um, this is really fun. So this is a pour that we did. Um, again, we did like a blush, a coral and a white a little bit of gold. And then you can take our Glitterific. So Glitterific is amazing also. If you have never tried this, it is the most glittery glitter paint out there. Um, top of this is gross, but I want you guys to see like this, it's oh. glitter suspended in um, clear paint. Um, wow. And I mean, it's just chunks, like multiple particles of sparkle and gold. It is insane. It's so beautiful. Um, so what you can do after you do a pour and you let it dry, I'm just going to put this on a napkin so you can see how thick that is. So this is folk art glitterific. Look at that. Um, you can just use a paintbrush and you can go in, I'm going to go right over top of here, and you can accent certain parts of your painting. So you know, oh, I want this to be really shiny, like just add little pops and accents or a, you know, a complementary or a contrast color. You know, I love this gold with the coral. So, so you can just add that and how it just elevates it. Like you're talking about your home or, you know, a piece of decor or a nursery or a girl's room. Like this is so fun. So Kira, we have a few questions. Um, sure. First of all, what is that you have beneath your canvas? What are you working on top of? Oh, this is just um, poster board, mm -hmm. cheap poster board. Um, I just did it so I could easily remove since we're doing so many different pours. Um, if I'm at home, I use a garbage bag, uh, like a plastic tarp for painting, um, just anything I have to protect my surface. You definitely want to protect your surface because you're going to get messy. Um, like I said, also, you can use just these metal baking pans if um, you're, whoa, that's really close up. Sorry, guys. <laughs> just use these metal baking pans. Um, if your canvas or surface is smaller, this is a great thing to use. Oh, Shay said puppy pads are great to use, too. That's an awesome idea. Oh, I never thought, I love that idea. That's so smart. That's um, okay, one more question, Kira. Sure. If you put too much paint on your canvas, will it crack when it dries? It will not crack. So these have all been done for a long time, like months, and it does not crack. And you can see it's still flexible, so it's not going to bubble or crack. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's what's, I mean, it's folk art, and it's just great quality. So you're going to have this piece, and you're not going to have to worry about it deteriorating and, like, throwing it away anytime soon. So there, that's a little tip that you can just take and add a little shimmer and sparkle. We just took our folk art glitterific and added it right to our canvas once it was dry. So that is fun to do. That okay. was so good. Yeah, I love that. Okay, so next we are gonna do these coasters. Um, and this was one of the projects that we um, 
really highlighted in this class because we wanted to give you a finished project. You know, you can watch pouring all day and there's, we could pour for hours. Um, and there's so many different tips and techniques. Um, but this coaster is um, a fun project that you can do. So we just got these, it comes in a pack of four at Michael's. There are these wood coasters. And we took some stencil tape. So this is what we're making these coasters. You can see these marbled coasters. And you know, if you want to buy these at retail, they're very expensive. Anything marble, um, this so expensive, they're heavy, they're, you know, um, not super functional. And also just this raw wood is such a big trend. Like I love the contrast between the metallic and the raw wood. Yeah, that so is that, really pretty. Yeah, this is a great project. Like what a great gift, you know, if someone's, um, you know, just, you can make a set of these time off and give them to somebody. It's a great way, um, a great gift to go. Um, so what we did was we took them and we taped them off just using our folk art stencil tape because this is going to remove, you can remove it um, very easily after it dries and it's not going to ruin the wood or the paint. Hey Kira, real quick. Um, yep. How much, how far does the pouring medium go? Someone wants to know, is one bottle of the pouring medium enough to do all these projects today? Absolutely. Yeah. So I've only used like, I don't know, like an inch of it and I was being very generous. So you're going to be able to do a number of projects because it's one to one. So it goes a long way. And this is 16 ounces. So you get a big container. And when are we going to have more pouring classes? They want to know. They want to do it with their friends and be able to ask questions again. Yeah, so um, Michaels is going to post them. I believe tomorrow they're going to have them all up, but we'll be here on Fridays, or it's Wednesday. Oh my gosh, people. Um, <laughs> on Wednesdays, um, same time we will be live. And I set, and again, we're going to be doing some really fun getting more into projects. So um, I can give you a sneak peek. We're going to do some fun um, geode pouring. Ooh, that we're going to talk about this technique and we're going to talk and show you how to make this, these rock crystals with Mod Podge. So this is going to be a really fun one. Um, nice. We are going to do a galaxy pour, um, which will be really fun with um, color shift. Um, so that's going to be great. Rainbow pour. Rainbows are really big right now. Just a sign of hope. And um, that'll be a great class. And I'm trying to think what else we have. Um, oh, at a beach. We're going to do a beach scene with pouring. So that's really fun. Like you're going to pour the water and pour your sky, your sunset. So I'm excited um, for that one. Yeah. So Michael's is going to post those. Um, so we want you guys to join. Again, today was just a really great way to do a 101 and get everybody acclimated with the product. And also this gives you time to go ahead if you can get to your Michael's or order online or do a curbside and get your folk art pouring medium and your folk art paints because then you'll be ready and we can actually pour along um, in the class. So that would be really fun and get to see what everybody's doing. It's kind of hard to hold it up when you're done. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do these coasters again. Um, I'm going to use, um, I have my colors pulled out here. So we are gonna use Ocean View, Silver Marlin. Um, we're gonna use Treasure Gold. So Treasure Gold is brand new, it came out last year. And we had um, really beautiful um, metallics. And again, I talked about Glitterific as it was the most glittery, glitterific, sparkly paint there is on the market. So Treasure Gold is the same. It is the most metallic, metallic paint out there that you can get. Um, the stuff you can like see yourself in the reflection when it dries. It is crazy shiny and beautiful. Nice. So um, this is brand new out last year. And then we added, so we had some basic colors, but we added some beautiful um, jewel tones and silvers this year. So you wanna check those out. Um, those are just great for anything. They're great on dark projects, light projects, as accents. This is a great thing to have. I think I need a navy in here. Here's midnight I'll use, I can't remember. There we go. Okay, so I am going to just do the same thing again. I'm gonna do my one-to-one. -one. And again, I'm doing a smaller surface area, so you don't need as much paint, but again, it doesn't go to waste. So, you know, pour these, you could pour a little canvas. Pour on um, wood letters are really great to pour on or uh, paper mache letters. So Michael has a great selection of letters and sayings and words. Like that's something that's really great you can pour on. Hey Kira. Um, yeah. Um, does it matter if the wood is sealed or not? Um, does it soak in more if it's not sealed? Um, nope, it does not need to be sealed. These coasters are not sealed and they are raw. 
So again, with that pouring medium, the paint is gonna float over any of your surfaces. And so how would you recommend sealing them? Like if you wanted to use it for hot cups after you're done. Yep, so I would, so I can get this paint out. Here we go. So, <laughs> um, so I would recommend our Mod Podge clear acrylic sealer. Um, this is an aerosol. You could use um, a number of Mod Podge formulas if you wanted to brush it on. We have a great dishwasher safe. Um, that would be great or gloss, but this spray makes it really easy. You just hit it. You can do one or two coats and then it's good once it's completely dried. So you want to make your, sure your pure, your pour is completely dry and then you can seal with this. All right. I'm just trying to get a little bit more navy out of here, you guys. Okay. I'm gonna pour on these coasters. Um, another really fun thing you can do is, you know, say you had a bunch of small coasters or um, small canvases or all the same size, you could actually line them up like this and you could pour on all of them at the same time. So you could do one pour all over and then split them apart and then they'd almost go back together like for a gallery wall, that's a really fun way to do it. Mm, that's a great so idea. Yeah, like so you could do it even, you know, these we poured separate, but you could really pour, you know, all these together and they go together. That's See awesome. That? Yeah. So you could even hang these or you could, you know, mount these or attach them to something. The backs are really easy. You know, what kind of tape was that again? Um, this is just our folk art stencil tape. So it's a low tack tape. So it won't harm your surface once you pull it up. So I just went ahead and I did a diagonal. I didn't measure. I just eyeballed it and I took, let me show you, took the tape off. Just kind of eyeball you want to get like the center of each corner. You can measure, but I'm good. I like to measure. Um, and you just want to tape that off. So basically anywhere there's tape, the paint is not going to go. So you could even use this. So say you had a canvas and you, um, for example, canvas and you taped off like certain areas and then you poured and then you can rip it off and then it would leave the white of the canvas show when you're done. So that's another really fun way to do a design or pattern. You could create like a lot of abstract, like art even on top of the pour. So Corey said they noticed you didn't use the thumbtacks this time. So how are you gonna keep it from sticking? Oh, I am gonna use thumbtacks. I just haven't gotten there. Yeah. <laughs> they're getting, you. they're getting, getting ahead of you. <laughs> they're worried for people you. People are paying attention to me. <laughs> oh, I'm they're paying attention. <laughs> Love we have it. tons of comments, Kira. Everybody's watching. Everybody's loving it. They're all good. Love you it. guys, you're so like I want to say thank you so much to Michaels, but you know, thank you so much to everybody that's taking time out of your day and um, being inspired by this. Like it's so important to us right now to be able to give this inspiration and spend time with everybody. So thank you so much. Um, so I'm gonna get my baking pan, my disposable baking pan, and again, parchment paper, wax paper or a silicone mat. If you have like a silicone baking mat or a place mat, that's also great to pour on because you can just rip that paint up when you're done. Okay, so I'm gonna use my tacks. I'm gonna stick my hand in paint. Okay. So again, this is great because you can just pop these right in here and they're not gonna hurt um, your surface. And then when you're done pouring, you could do a double-sided. You could let them dry completely and go back and pour over the other side. We didn't finish these off. Um, or you could just take a solid color and paint the back, or you could even Mod Podge like a coordinating piece of scrapbook paper or solid paper. That would be a great way to do it is um, Mod Podge the back just to give it a really finished look and then seal it off. Kira, do you have anything to the bottom of the coasters? Like, would you put like, you know, rubber feet on it or something like that? Yeah, you could do felt or like those little oh, sticky, yeah. sticky rubber uh, feet on there. Absolutely. That's a good you idea. could even oh. use hot glue. If you don't have that at home, you could do little drops of hot glue oh. and create your own little silicone feet. Great idea. Huh. Okay. And then I have the thumbtacks here, you guys. Okay. So I'm just going to do two here to show you. So really this is so cool, better than school. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and I'm an adult in school. I mean, home schooling or what virtual online learning. <laughs> This is, for these days. this is just as important for our children, mm -hmm. arts and crafts, and letting them be, um, you know, creative and express themselves right now, I think is really important for everybody, but especially our kids. Yeah, that's okay. awesome. So I have just poured paint in my cups, um, folk art, and
And then I also added our treasure gold so you can use specialty and metallics and it's not gonna dull or change the color of any of these paints. Even the metallic, it's gonna be just as shiny when you add your pouring medium. So I'm gonna do my one-to-one -one ratio. Again, not super specific. And you'll, once you start to do it, you'll kind of get a feel. Again, I always say it's like baking, like you can kind of feel it, like just like you would taste your recipe, you know when that paint is the right consistency. Um, and I'll show you again, kind of what you're looking for as you mix it. Okay, so that looks good. And again, I haven't even used half a bottle yet of this and I've been generous. So this bottle, the 16 ounce bottle is gonna go a long way. Okay, so I'm gonna mix. Okay. And it is, when you start mixing, you're like, eh, I don't know about that, but it really does bring that paint right back to its color. There you go, beautiful gray. Leah said, my six-year-old brother and I are doing this right now. He likes doing this more than his homework. <laughs> and which colors are I using again? So I am using Silver Marlin. I am using Ocean View. I've got Midnight and the Platinum, Platinum Treasure Gold. I love Ocean View. That's one of my favorite uh, folk art colors for it's sure. It's really bright. It's really so pretty. pretty. Especially for summer. Oh, yeah. Can you use a tongue depressor to mix it? Absolutely. Tongue depressor, popsicle stick, end of a paintbrush because it wipes right off with soap and water. Um, you can wash all of this up too if you don't want to waste a bunch of plastic. Um, you know, want to be just environmentally responsible that you can wash up with soap and water, you know, it's going to come right off if you want to go ahead and do that. And Kira, a lot of people are asking, um, how do you avoid wasting the excess paint? And I told them you have a special uh, trick for that yeah. later on in the class. So I told them to stay tuned for that. Yeah, let me pour this and we can talk about that. Um, absolutely. And again, if you're going to use this again soon, I mean, I wouldn't let it sit more than a day. Um, or so, but you could just put like press and seal or some kind of, you know, airtight closure on your cup and go back and use it. So if I made this today, I did a pour and I was like, oh, I'm going to come back to it tomorrow. It would still be good. I just give it a stir. And if it got thick, you could add a little bit um, more pouring medium to it actually just to thin it out. So you can see that's kind of your consistency. And I just think Jesse said like a syrup, like it's not mm -hmm. super watery, like water in paint. It's got a different texture, but it's definitely with the regular paint in this cup, you wouldn't be able to do this. It would be too thick. That drip is important. That's a good, yeah. that's a good texture. And you, you just kind of get to feel it. You'll know. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's because you want it to glide over your surface. Okay, so I've taped off my wood um, coasters and I'm going to pour right on there. And actually, um, here we go. I'm gonna do a little baby dirty pour on one of them. So again, I'm just gonna layer my colors and a little bit goes a long way. And remember, whatever color you put in first is gonna be on top. So I'm just gonna do a little bit of this bright blue. It doesn't need a ton. Okay. And I love the metallic. Like I want that to be the majority of my coaster and just a So I'm gonna keep layering. And they're asking when you're mixing it, they can see some bubbles. Will those go away? They will. There will be no bubbles. Um, it's just from, you know, the air gets in when pouring and from mixing really from that stir, um, you can tap them down in your cup, but really once you pour, you're not gonna have bubbles. If you get any, just give it a little tap or swirl and they'll come right off. But um, Sandra, I've, I've never had an issue with bubbles once it dries. Sandra wants to know, um, she said someone mentioned ceramic tile coasters. Um, mm -hmm. She made some tile coasters that didn't work out. So she, could she salvage them by doing a paint pour on them? Absolutely, yes. So if you have an old canvas, an old piece of wood, an old coaster, you could pour right over it and it's so forgiving, it's gonna cover it right up. Awesome. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna pour, this is really silver. Pour. So I'm just doing a dirty pour where you mix all your colors into one cup. And I'm actually just gonna, instead of flipping it upside down since these are so little, I'm just gonna pour directly from the cup here. Ooh. Here we go, and you can see. And so he's got a lot of silver in him. So if you're like, mm, I need a little bit more dark, you know, you can let a little bit of that slide off. And dark is, you know, a lot of dark goes a long way. A little bit of dark goes a long way. So I'm just gonna 
at the edge here. Hey, Kira, um, are certain oh. colors heavier than others? Like, do some sink when you're mixing them like that? Nope, I've never seen that. They're all equal because you're using that pouring medium, so you're gonna fit, it's thinning it out, so it's all gonna be the same consistency. Okay. Um, and it doesn't change the, um, um, like the paints are not gonna be transparent. It doesn't change the opacity of the paints by adding the pouring medium. So if you're worried, if you have a light color, it's not gonna have like a good hide, that's not gonna change at all. So um, people are asking, what is a cell? They're wondering um, what people are talking about when they're asking about cells in pouring. Can you just let them know like what that is? Yeah, the, so the cells, and that's you may have a better answer, but cells yeah. is when you add silicone or you can, I've seen people apply heat also mm -hmm. um, to their um, pores and it changes the, um, the look of the canvas and it creates like almost big bubbles and rings. Yeah, so, so like instead of it being just like smooth and swirly sort of like um, all of ours are here, when you use silicone, it resists each other even more. And so like little pockets of the silicone pop up and like Kira said, it looks like foamy, almost like bubbly. Yeah. So that's by adding silicone. So we don't have that in our line, so we just stick to our paint pour, but you can use silicone or um, a heating tool or a flame if you want. You know, there's a ton of inspiration out there and the folk art pouring medium can be used with any of those. Yeah, that's a good sure. right there. So you can see, I just did a dirty pour and instead of flipping it upside down, I just poured directly from the cup and I got these beautiful, this one's great, this beautiful marbled look and that blue and the silver is so nice. And then when you're done, I'm gonna move these over. Um, all you need to do is you just take your tape. So you wanna let this dry and you just pull this off. I'm so embarrassed the back of our coasters are really dirty. <laughs> Again, you could pour on the back or you could paint them solid or even Mod Podge, like a coordinating paper right on the back. Yeah, that's such a great idea. Um, okay, so. And they're asking again, can you pour it on glass? So we recommend using folk art enamel paints with the medium if you're gonna be pouring it on glass. Yep, so this is what you're gonna get and then you're gonna have your super clean line. Wow, yeah. wow, that is really awesome. clean. And then again, I would spray with your Mod Podge. We got clear acrylic spray, just hit these. I do one or two coats on there once it's completely dry and these are gonna be good. You can actually, you'll be able to use them as a coaster. So also great for someone said they were doing their ceramic tiles. Um, I would use an enamel or multi-surface to pour with because of your surface. Um, and I would also seal it then um, because of ceramic, if you're gonna be using it for something functional that's not decorative. So can you use the extra paint that you have to pour on another canvas if you got leftovers? Mm -hmm. You can, you could hit up, you know, I said we've got this great piece of wood, so you could, you know, pour directly on the wood, um, another canvas, any of this can be reused. You can mix it. You could use these and then add. So, so it's like, hmm, I want to bring purple into the mix. You could just mix up a small batch of purple and add it as an accent. So that Diane said it looks like waves from Hawaii at night. Wow, that's very yes. specific. Oh, I wish we were in Hawaii at night. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay, so one more fun thing I want to show everybody. So Somebody asked, like, what do you do with all this paint? Or you're, you're wasting all this paint. And you can see, I've got a mess over here, but I'll show you guys. Um, so like, this is basically what's left, right? So this is what you get after every pour, whether you're pouring on a pan, um, paper. That's why I like these pans or parchment paper or silicone. Um, because what you can do is once this dries, you can, and I can show you, I just have a little baby one here. Um, you can peel, whoops, sorry guys, mess, so messy. Sorry, I'm gonna wipe my hands too. And again, baby wipes, they are my best friend when I'm doing this because I don't like to wear gloves. You can wear gloves um, if you don't wanna mess up your, your nails. But again, this is all wash off with soap and water. So. Um, so if you guys can see this, this is a metal pan we did a pour. You can peel your paint up. So literally you get these pieces and they're called paint skins. And it's a thing, it's a trend that people are doing. We, um, it is an amazing thing that you can use. So this is not wasting any of your paint. So you peel this up and what you can do is you can cut it. You can um, use scissors, an X-Acto knife. I have scissors here somewhere. Scissors, so you can literally just cut right through it. 
You could use a stencil and trace out. You could use it. It's great for um, round or curved surfaces because it's hard to pour on those sometimes. So what you can do, this is what you get. So this is a paint skin. This literally was left over from a giant paint pour. We peeled it up and you can cut it and you can see it. It's like a big fruit roll up. It's like a paint fruit roll up. Yeah, it, is. Um, it really is. <laughs> yeah, and you can cut it. You can take a stencil and trace. You know, we cut out a little M here from Michael's. Just trace right on there, cut it out. Um, it is an amazing thing and it's so fun. You're not wasting paint. It's a whole nother project that you can do. So we've got these um, and we did this. Oh God, sorry guys. Um, you can see this, we did this canvas. And again, we just cut out the letters and these are paint skins and we just stuck them on the canvas. You can Mod Podge them directly That's to so the canvas. Cool. Yeah, so these were just leftover paint skins that we had and you could personalize. So this is a great thing to do on a canvas. You could write your name, you could put anything on there. Um, great way to personalize your decor. You could do shapes. Um, again, you had a stencil, you could print something off and use as, as a pattern. So say you wanted a unicorn or a, um, a sun or a star, you could take that, trace it right on here, even with a Sharpie, and then cut it out. You could use an X-Acto knife if you need straight lines. You could do really great mosaics with this. So you could cut a ton of pieces and then Mod Podge them down. You could do that. That's a great trick. Um, hey, Kira, um, when you're gluing the paint skins down, is Mod Podge better than glue? which Mod Podge is a glue, right? Yeah, so your Mod Podge is gonna be a glue and sealer in one, so I would recommend that. You could use matte or gloss. Um, I would recommend using gloss because your paint, like all these paints are have a little sheen to them. So I think that gloss would be really nice. Um, you could even use like a sparkle Mod Podge, but this way you're sealing it and gluing it onto your surface. So this is just a mason jar that already has some stuff on it, but look what you can do. So say, you want to wrap that and it's really like i said hard to paint on a 3d object because otherwise you need to stand there and basically spin it the whole time so the paint doesn't come off so if you have a paint skin you can just trim it and you could literally like wrap it around your mason jar and it's going to look like you poured the jar so i'd want to cover that the whole way but you get the idea um we did a lampshade for one of our projects so this is just a what this is giant a, a white lampshade and we poured a giant sheet. Um, this wasn't even left over, like we purposely poured this. So that's something else if you have a large- That is circle, so cool. Or want something intentional, like get a giant pan or a piece of parchment paper and do a dirty pour, clean pour and let that dry. And then you have a giant sheet of paint you can work with and we wrapped this. Um, and it's just so beautiful. It looks high end, just that marble and the gold, these white, gray and treasure gold. So you can set that right on top of your lamp. Um, I think that's all the examples I have on that. Oh, this guy too, this was paint skin. So this is just a, a plant holder and these are all different ones. So this is a great way too. We didn't have a ton left over of all these paint skins, but it was nice because they all coordinated. And again, we just traced, cut out triangles and popped them right on there and used Mod Podge to um, adhere them and seal them. That's a really fun thing. That is such a cool idea, Kira. Everybody loves it. They love having a way to use their uh, excess paint without wasting all that uh, runoff. Yeah, so, and you can just keep these. Um, you can store them just with wax paper, parchment paper. So even if you didn't want to use them right away, you could just, I would store them flat and they're going to stay. These aren't going to go bad. You're basically creating paper, paint paper for yourself to use, which is really great. Very cool. Yeah, so does anybody have any other questions? I hope everybody enjoyed. Like, I'm so excited and happy to be here with Michaels and, you know, appreciate everybody crafting along. Yeah. I hope this is a good basic 101. And again, the next couple of weeks, we're going to get into more specific pours. We're going to do a geo pour, galaxy, a beach, and a rainbow pour. So we have all that coming up, which is really exciting. And so it gives everybody time to get their supplies and you can craft along. We do have some more questions. Okay. Um, somebody's asking, is the Mod Podge sealer, is that animal safe? Oh, well, it's, um, <laughs> well, we, uh, it's non-toxic. I told them, somebody was also asking, is it food safe? I said we recommend um, sealing mm -hmm. it to protect from a wet glass, but I probably wouldn't recommend putting food directly on that sealer. Yeah, agreed. And I mean, I don't use products that I wouldn't 
feel safe around my family or animals. So, right. um, you know, there's warnings on here, just like every, um, it's more the aerosol. So, but Mod Podge is non-toxic, um, along with our folk art paints. Any of our paints in our line are non-toxic. So great for the whole family. Um, so yeah. yeah. Is but if glitter? you check out cladonline.com there and you um, just search the Mod Podge um, sealer, there'll be more information about that if you want, like, very specific if you're worried okay, about that. But all this product is safe, non-toxic. Um, is the glitter behind you, that project behind you, is that the same technique you were showing with the Glitterific, the one on the wall? This? Yes. So again, this was just um, direct pour. So, and we were very intentional doing that, as you guys can see. So we poured, we started at the top and poured um, in like stripes and we didn't do swirling. And then you can, or you could even paint that. And then this is just the glitterific right on top of that. Okay. So Kira, what can't you pour on? <laughs> is there I anything mean, that you shouldn't? <laughs> your pet. What'd you say? <laughs> your pets. You can't pour on your <laughs> yeah, pet. don't pour on your pets. <laughs> um, no, I think, it, you know, any surface. It works on um, metal and glass. Again, I would use a multi-surface or enamel if that's what you're, you know, or ceramic. Um, wood, canvas, uh, paper mache, terracotta. It's all you great. Know, you Fabric you baskets. can do. You guys, we pour on pumpkins at Halloween. Get your funkin from Michael's and you can pour right on that. This is also great for the paint skins because sometimes these guys are tricky. So you could literally just do your paint skin and then Mod Podge them right on. You could write the word boo, or you know, you could do your um, house number is a big trend on pumpkins, mm. but you could do it all poured would be fun. Yeah. Someone's saying they want to do it on their um, phone case. That's a great idea. We've yep. actually done that before. That's such a good idea. Yep, um, that's a great idea. Kira, will you go over just the brands again? People are asking, what is the pouring medium? What are the paints? What is the Mod Podge? Will you just quickly read those again? Yeah, absolutely. I sorry, my uh, space is a mess here, but um, so we've got two different um, folk art pouring paints in the line at Michaels, available in store and online. So we've got our folk art premixed pouring paint. So these are already premixed. It has the pouring medium in the bottle for you. So this is you're going to do direct pours or your dirty pours or any other kind of pour right out of the bottle. Um, so that's really great because that's done for you. Mm -hmm. Or we have our um, pouring medium. So this comes in a 16 ounce bottle and this is what you can add any of your acrylic paints to. So it's a one to one ratio and it is the folk art pouring medium. And then we have been using our regular folk art paints from the line. Again, there's close to, if not more, 100 colors just in the regular folk art line at Michael's. Um, so we've been using a number of these. So it's folk art. They also make a multi-surface, which is great because then you can, it's great for indoor, outdoor. Um, you can use it on ceramic, metal, glass. We've got enamels. We've got a ton of specialties that work. So we showed everybody our treasure golds. So again, this is all folk art. Um, treasure golds, there's a ton of these colors that are brand new. We've got the traditional metallics, but we also have all the jewel tones. And I think the only other thing I showed was the glitterific. So, this is, again, that canvas behind me, that's glitterific. And right here, so you guys, the most glittery glitter paint. <laughs> um, so this is great, this is folk art glitterific, and it's um, glitter particles suspended in a clear base. So it is super shiny um, that you can add to all your projects. And then we have a whole Mod Podge line um, at Michael's. So there's matte, gloss, satin, outdoor, dishwasher safe, you name it. Mm -hmm. um, so you could use any of those to seal your projects, you know, depending um, what you're doing, but any of those would work because it's a glue and sealer all in one. But we um, also use this um, aerosol spray, which is just really easy to hit like a coaster or if you're doing rocks or something that's going to be outdoor, this is a great thing just mm -hmm. to hit it with and it's going to seal it and protect it and it's not going to be sticky or um, you're going to be able to use it. It doesn't have to be just decorative then. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Okay, well, do we have to pick a winner? That's fun. Yes, I'm scrolling through my phone randomly. I've been scrolling, so I'm not picking the person. <laughs> no pressure. This, I did this for Jesse on Monday, and it was a lot of pressure. Okay, the winner is Shirley Martin. 
Okay. Hey, Charlene, congratulations. So, Shirley, you have won um, $50 of the Plaid products. You can do all this pouring at home. So, please contact us um, on our Plaid Crafts page, um, and we will reach out to you. Awesome. So, we want her to get on our Facebook page, correct, and message us? Yep. Go on the Plaid Crafts Facebook page and shoot us a message so we can um, get your info and make sure you get your prize. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and everybody tuning in. Again, we'll be here um, next couple Wednesdays. Michaels is going to post all the classes that are available. So sign up, get your supplies, and we can um, do some more pouring. So thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. Have a good rest of the week. Bye, Bye guys.